This is a podcast about one woman's mission to help entrepreneurs and business owners write better business books. Each week, we tackle your writing excuses, because there are excuses too, and help you beat the blank page of doom so that you can write the book that will grow your life and your business. Now, here's your host, Vicky Fraser. Hello, and welcome to the 1000 Authors Show, and Happy New Year. This is the first podcast of 2020. Happy New Year. The Roaring Twenties. Sounds like the future. It does. Where's my hoverboard? Don't know. We watch... Oh, I'm Vicky Fraser, and this is my husband, Joe. Hello. This is the 1000 Authors Show, in which we talk <laughs> about all the problems that we have writing books. Well, you don't write books. I write books. I don't write books. I'm just a sidekick. Yeah, so it's it's 2020, and oh, we are drinking gin and tonic. Bath orange gin. Yes, Bath Orange Gin, which I bought at Bath Christmas, well, not at Bath Christmas Market, but when we went to visit Bath Christmas Market with my cousin, Charlene. Hi, Hi Charlene. Charlene. I think she listens. Really? Yeah. Blimey. I know. Uh, cheers. Cheers. It's very nice, this is. Very nice. Do you like it? Mm. What's in it? Is it tonic water? Yeah. Good. Thanks for <laughs> yeah, expanding on that while I had not, a sip. <laughs> not just gin, for sure. Not just gin. That would be a big gin. Okay, so we always start the podcast, if you are new to the podcast, hello, welcome. We always start the podcast with a little book review, I guess, so what we're reading at the moment. Mm -hmm. I tell you what I'm reading, fiction and non-fiction, and Joe tends to mostly be reading Mostly be reading fiction. Although this is non-fiction, what I'm reading, I am reading The Soul of an Octopus by Simon Montgomery. Father Christmas brought it in my Christmas stocking uh, a couple of weeks ago. Yeah. And it's very interesting. I'm only only like 20 pages into it, but it's nice because octopuses are basically amazing. Yes, they Closest are. thing to aliens we've got. They are. Is that what Simon Montgomery says as well? Pretty much. Cool. Uh, would you like to tell the listeners about your theory of octopuses and goats? Well, basically goats are wrong. I mean, I think most people can you know, agree with me on that. They're just basically wrong. They smell wrong, they look wrong, their eyeballs are wrong, everything's wrong about them. Goats are not wrong, goats are awesome. Carry on. And I think, basically, if you look at a goat's eyes and an octopus eyes, they're basically the same thing. You just so, said basically 17 times. Yeah, mm, you're exaggerating, basically. <laughs> so I think goats are the landing craft for octopodes. I think if you opened a goat's head, you would find an octopus inside pulling levers. Pretty sure. So that's Joe's octopus goat theory. I, on the other hand, I'm read. I don't think Simon Montgomery mentions that. In I'm his not book. sure he does. I haven't read the whole book. I mean, if he agrees with me, you know, I will feel vindicated. If you're listening to this, Sai, um, get in touch. Tell us. Hi, Sai. <laughs> tell us how wrong Joe is. <laughs> um, I, on the other hand, I'm reading fiction at the moment. I am reading The Hundred Thousand Kingdoms by N.K. Jemison mm-hmm. because I liked her obelisk uh, stone sky stone, trilogy yeah trilogy the broken world trilogy i think it is i like that so much and it's great so far it's uh, different it deals with some of the same issues of kind of um prejudice and slavery and all of that kind of thing but in a fantasy setting and there's gods and there's epic battles and there's yeah there's all sorts of stuff cool. it's very cool i'm about halfway through i'm really enjoying it and non-fiction, I am still reading The Art of Asking by Amanda Palmer, which is her memoir, and I quite like it. It's She's an interesting person. I think she's quite marmite You either really like her or you really hate her. I haven't made up my mind on her yet. But she's married to Neil Gaiman, and he's awesome, so she can't be that bad. I always kind of worry at the point where you are saying, I'm still reading this. It kind of feels like you absolutely thrash your way through books at a great rate if you're enjoying yourself. And you don't thrash through them if you're not enjoying yourself. Oh, well, no, that's not true because it took me ages to read Atomic Habits, but that's because I was making a lot of notes and I was implementing stuff as I went along and I was rereading bits of it and all sorts. Mm. The reason I haven't made very much progress on The Art of Asking is because I've spent the last two weeks basically doing nothing. Eating cake. Eating cake and playing computer games and really doing very little. I've been reading a lot of fiction. It's been Christmas. It's been Christmas. So, yeah. So that's what I'm reading at the moment. I will be reading another non-fiction book and probably another fiction book by the time we do our next podcast so yeah right this week we are you might be wondering what we're talking about this week uh if you've seen the title of the episode which is growing like a rotting badger like a rotting badger like a rotting badger um we are talking this week about how we are told by every single guru and his mom and his dog that we must grow 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 all the time or we're basically shit right 
And it's just this message that's put out there along with the kind of 24 seven hustle and you've got to like be working so hard all the time and you wear exhaustion like a badge of honor and all of that kind of, I kind of all, I lump all of that stuff into the same arena. And when I always think when everybody is shouting the same thing at you, you need to stop and look at what everybody's doing and then go, you know what, I'm just going to go in the other direction. And I've got a few reasons for that. But go on. I would like as, you know, a sidekick to put forward a theory. Go on. Okay. So you know how like beauty and fashion magazines are there to A, make you feel bad about yourself and B, spend money? Yes. I think it's the same thing. It is the same thing. And I think I make that point later on. Oh, I should have read the show notes. No, that's cool. No, you can make it now because it's fine. Because okay. it's, it's a good point and we can come back to it. Um, but yeah, we're, we're just told it's like it's like a public shaming thing. It's like a shaming thing. If you are not on this bandwagon, you know, we're told that we've got to create something enormous that we have to that we want to sell. That we have got to make as much money as possible, as fast as possible, and then make some more, mm-hmm. regardless of the consequences. And that we've got to like have loads of employees and outsource absolutely everything, even if it's stuff that we enjoy. And you know that we've got to go after as many customers as we possibly can. You know, if you haven't, you're told that if you haven't got like a massive list email list and a massive customer list, then you're basically unsuccessful. And, you know, it's, that is problematic for a bunch of reasons. You know, really fast growth is is really damaging. <laughs> chaotic. To, it's chaotic, yeah. And for somebody like me, I can't, you know, if, if 10 people told me they wanted me to ghostwrite their books, that's not going to happen. Hmm. You know, even if I gave up everything on working on my own business, there's no way I could do that. Yeah. So, but we're told this and we're told that we must create endless products and services and write a bazillion books and sell more copies than anybody else. And, you know, I see, I see people bragging every now and then, oh, I've, you know, I've written and published, you know, 10, 10 books this year. And I'm like, okay, are they all good? Yeah. And I'm, not, I'm absolutely not knocking people who can put out books that quickly because um, one of them is one of my best friends, Dom, and he puts out really good books really quickly, but he's not, he doesn't like put out a book a month, you know? Mm. And I I see people bragging about that all the time. And I just think that it it just becomes this, it just becomes this crazy badge of honor that, you know, I've got, I've got to, I've got to, it's more, more, more all the time. Sure. And yeah, I, I don't think that all, I don't think all growth is good. No. Well, it's, I mean... Some of it is cancerous, and some of it is like a rotting badger on the side of the road. Inflating. Yeah, it's getting bigger on the outside, but inside is like a seething mass of maggots and decay. Enormous gaps. And enormous gaps and poisonous gas and, you know... And it, I was really obsessed with growth for such a long time, and it made me really miserable. I was like a rotting badger. Hmm. Not stinky, I don't think. Mm. Moving on. <laughs> It's a, good, it's a good, it's a good, good thing. I like it. I like the rotting badger analogy. Yeah, because on the outside, it's like I mean, even an inflated badger, it's not something that you would think. It's not but, what you aspire to, is it? Really? No, <laughs> no. But you could think, oh, you know, nice, nice plum badger. If that's what you like, I'm going to stop now. <laughs> Stretching. <laughs> My point is that not all growth is good. <laughs> not all growth is good. So today, I wanted to talk about, and this is. Quite good timing as well. I'm not going to talk about goals and all of that kind of thing, really, because there are plenty. I've done we've done that before, and there are plenty of podcasts and books out there about that. And you know, I, I write about that quite a lot because goals are important. Yeah, goal and settings ig- and plans, and, and ignoring your goals is important as well. Because if you focus only on your goal, you'll never do the things you need to do to get yourself there. Um, but I want you today to think about what you really want out of your business. So I'm going to ask you, what do you want? What do you really want? What do you really, really want? No, I'm not doing it. Oh, <laughs> why? Spice Girls are great. What do you want from your business and what do you want from your life? And I think that's quite a difficult question. It's a big question. So I would like you to also uh, think about what you don't want, because I think that can be an easier place to start. Yes. And also think about, and this is really important because most people never do this. They, they talk about goals and they talk about what they're going to do to get there and all the rest of it. But I also want you to think about what you are willing to endure to get to where you want to be. Yeah. Because, you know, I hear people say, oh, I'd love to run a marathon. It's like, okay, what are you going to do to get there? And they'll remember. It's like, are you willing to actually endure 
the what is quite epic pain <laughs> at times. And most of the time the answer is no, and that's fine. But I think you've got to you've got to think about that before you go into whatever it is that you want to achieve. Because if you yeah. if you don't if you don't really think about what you might have to endure to get there and the pain that you might and discomfort that you might have to endure, whether it's physical or psychological or emotional or whatever then you're not going to be prepared and you're going to fall at that first hurdle. And some of those things that you uh, choose to endure are not just yours. You know, you might have a partner, you might be raising children, you might be doing, you know, renovating a house, you might be doing all kinds of other things. Um, and if you kind of say, you know, unilaterally, well, I'm going to endure not seeing the children after seven o'clock at night because that's when I'm going to do my business development or whatever – you know, your partner needs to be on board with that. Yeah. Your kids need to understand that. Well, I think if they're like young kids, they should be in bed by someone anyway. Well, yeah, okay. But you, you know what I'm saying? I, yeah. It's, exactly. it's, it's, there's, there's people around you that you're affecting, not just not just yourself. Usually, yeah. That is that is true. That's a really good point. So what are you willing to enjoy? And how much is your family and the people around you willing to support you hmm. in what you want to do? Really important. So think about all of that. But I would like to start right now by getting you to think about what you don't want. And I'm going to just kick you off by listing a few things that I don't want because they might spark ideas because I think sometimes it can be a bit like, oh, here's an open question and it's like, mm -hmm. oh, where do I start? So here's what I don't want. I don't want the, the responsibility of lots of employees working for me okay. because it's it's a big responsibility. It's like it's not just paying my, you know, my wages and paying for my bills and things like that. It's making sure that somebody else is looked after as well. Mm -hmm. And then there's all of the admin that goes with it. There's a lot of responsibility involved in having actual employees. Yes. Maybe one day, maybe one day I will want to because I have an idea that I would quite like to open a publishing house one day, but that's quite a long way down the line. And right now, I don't want employees. I don't want more and more software to break and get confused by because that's something that I do well. Reasonable. But again, we're told, oh, you need this shiny object, you need this, you need that to do this, that and the other. And I just got myself in such a model over the years and I've paired everything back super simple now. Mm. And I'm managing to make things work for me with the bare minimum of tools. And I think that you need to start, keep things as simple as possible for as long as possible. Again, but I think I think a lot of those messages that you're receiving at that point, you need this thing, you need that thing, are the same as those fashion magazines that say you need bigger eyebrows, you need smaller eyebrows, you need plumper lips. Yeah. Go and buy some stuff. And they're, they're all pumping an industry. Yeah. And it's it's exactly the same thing. As a business owner, you're getting hit with these messages too. Buy this shiny object, buy that website plugin, buy this thing, yeah. it'll help you. And the way they're marketed, I don't like, some of it's marketed fine. Um, you know, it's, it's marketed in a way that I would call ethical. It's like, oh, you know, we've got this thing, it solves this problem, perhaps you'd like it. But then there's the unethical marketing that you see a lot of, and it's really insidious. Some of it is quite, some of it is is not obviously kind of insidiously nasty, but it's it's that kind of, you get sh all the loud voices on the internet are shouting that this is what you need and that are subtly implying that if you don't have it, then you're somehow obsolete mm -hmm. or stupid or not worthy or, you know what I mean? Just there's there's a way to market your stuff ethically and the, the, and you can tell as well because when you look at marketing or an advert that, that makes you feel like, oh, this could be really cool, then that is generally ethical marketing. When you hit, when you get mar when you see marketing that makes you think, oh God, I need that. It's I feel and it makes you just feel icky and just like, oh my God, I, I'm just I'm not good enough. I'm not worthy. If I don't have this, then I'm you know I'm not a good enough person. That's the kind of marketing that I think will tell you that that person is possibly not the type of person you want to be buying stuff from. Hmm. And there's a lot of it. There's a lot of it around. So yeah, I don't want shiny objects. Um, I don't want thousands of thousands of customers who just become faceless numbers. No, you really enjoy relationships with your customers, don't you? You really enjoy knowing them and getting stuck into their business and yeah. climbing around in their heads. And even the people who, I mean, I can't, I can't get to know intimately everybody who buys a copy of my book, obviously, but even the people who buy my book, um, from my website it's more difficult if they buy it through Amazon but if they buy it from my website they get follow-up emails from me and I encourage them to get in touch with me and tell them tell me about the book that they want to write and the ideas that they have and I love I love reading those emails if you think I don't read them and I don't reply then that's not true I might not reply it might take me a while to reply but I reply to every single email that I get because I love hearing people's stories mm. so that kind of thing you can't do it if I had like 10,000 people a month buying my book there is no way there's no way that I could keep up with all those people and yeah nor would I be expected to but that would make me sad because you'd I'm, be missing out on on those experiences and those those contacts yeah I would and so you know if 10,000 people a month want to buy my book then bloody hell go ahead but I wouldn't I wouldn't be able to have the same kind of relationship that I like 
Yeah, probably so, buy it on Amazon. That would make life easier if you were, yeah, if me. you were going to buy ten thousand copies. <laughs> yeah, <Amazon. laughs> that would be awesome. Um, I don't want an expensive and convoluted website. No, I've had so many years of pain and setting fire to money, and then I was like, last year I was like, you know what, I'm going to build the damn thing myself, mm. and I have. And is it the world's most bestest professionally designed website? No, it's not, but it looks pretty good. It works. It it's very simple to navigate. Does exactly what I need it to do. You understand everything that's going on there. I understand everything that's going on there. I've got a few plugins. I've got a few bits and pieces. I've got someone looking after things behind the scenes. Hi, Louise. Hi, Louise. And she does a fa- fabulous job. But I make sure that I at least know the basics of what's going on mm-hmm. and how things fit together. So I don't want an expensive and convoluted website. And you don't need one either. And if you are in the early stages of like writing a book or growing your business, do not, please do not spend a bazillion pounds on a really expensive website because unless you can make it work for you, it's just going to be a waste of your money. Mm. You can build a great site with something like, if you must, Squarespace or Wix, um, which are super, super simple, I would go for WordPress because long run it will give you a lot more flexibility. Mm-hmm. Um, so yeah, I don't want thousands and thousands of products that I can confuse myself with and confuse my customers with. And struggle to keep up to date. Struggle to keep up to date. And don't want to jump on the latest marketing fad bandwagon and spread myself even thinner. Mm-hmm. I don't want more time away from you. Yay. I don't want more stress. I don't want just like more, more, more of everything. And, you know, I, for a long time, I thought I needed all of those things to be a success because that is what the loud voices on the internet tell us. Mm-hmm. And it's it's not true. You know, they, we're all, always being shrieked at to keep up and pay attention and stay ahead of the curve. And Yeah, yeah. And, 10xing everything and we're also told you know what we're also told that and this really this really bugs me because i was thinking about this the other day i was thinking about this because i've just bought ryan warman's new book called delusions of brander which is hilarious by the way i've only just started reading it but it's hilarious he is um medical marketer he used to be a doctor an actual doctor in australia and mm-hmm. now he runs a marketing agency for healthcare professionals okay. um and he's absolutely hilarious on twitter follow him on twitter he's dr draper on Twitter and he's just written this book and it's fantastic. And he was, a lot of the things that he shouts about on Twitter are railing against the new breed of marketers who are like, email marketing's dead, direct mail's dead. The new thing is social media. All of our attention spans have shrunk. And it's like, if you know anything about human psychology and human evolution, we did not spend millions of years evolving to, you know, what we basically are now, which is how our brain, you know, our brains work in a certain way. In the last 10 years, that hasn't changed. Hmm. You know, our basic our basic neurophysiology has not changed in the last 10 years. Uh, we don't have shorter attention spans. We are we have more distractions, but we are perfectly capable of concentrating as long as we ever have been. Anyway, all of the stuff that used to work five years, 10 years, 100 years ago in marketing still works because the basic, you know, the way that human brains work has yeah. not changed. And it's not going to change in our lifetime. Because that ain't how evolution works. So yeah, that all of that shiny bandwagon stuff, all of those people saying, oh, the next big thing is Snapchat. Remember Snapchat? No, mm. no, you don't. Because it's, you know, for 12 year olds now. The next big thing, if you're not on Snapchat, then your marketing is dead. You can ignore all of that. It's, yeah, experiment with the odd marketing platform or whatever. But you've got, you've got to keep in mind that it's strategies that are important. And the strategies haven't changed. The tactics are changing quite often. Mm-hmm. But I tell you what, one of my predictions is that um, SEO is going to come back in a big way because Facebook ads are just going to become beyond most people's reach in terms of being able to afford them. Okay. Yeah, I think so. Um, the big advertising platforms are just getting more and more expensive and more difficult to put ads out for, especially if you're in certain types of industry. Um, so I think SEO is going to come back in, in a fairly big way uh, this year. And that's not a bad thing because it's helping people solve problems. And I also think that direct mail is going to con- and email is going to continue to be super important because nobody does direct mail anymore because all of the loud voices on the internet said it's dead. Mm-hmm. So if you're the only one sending interesting stuff to people through the post, who do you think they're going to buy from? I buy from the companies that send me catalogs. Yeah. You can you can, you can sit and laugh at me or not. I don't really care. <laughs> you're wrong. <laughs> that's where you spend your money. Yeah, yeah. That's where that's where a lot of people spend their money. So and I'm not saying that the new ways don't work. Mm-hmm. Some of them do. But don't ignore the old ways in favour of a new fad. But if you, yeah, if you invest fifty grand on a shiny new platform hmm. to take advantage of something that's up and coming, and then it dies, and it dies. Remember MySpace? <laughs> no. <laughs> There's a whole yeah. generation of people out there who have no idea what MySpace is. I know. I know. It's really funny. Okay, so all of that stuff—that was a bit of a rant. That was a bit of a tangent, but we're still relevant, I think. Still relevant. 
still relevant. Um, because I want you to think about what you don't want. And all of those things are things that I don't want. And now you've had to think about what you don't want. I want you to have a think about what you do want. Mm-hmm. How, what do you want your life to look like? What do you want your business to look like? What do you want your time to be spent on? Yeah. Um, yeah. Yeah. What do you want your time to be spent on? Because time is really the only thing that we can't get back ever. You can make more money, but you know, I don't want you spending your I don't want you spending your time on stuff that you regret or you hate. Life is too short for that. Mm. It really is. So here is what I want from my life and my business. And it does sound a bit wanky, but I don't care. And it's a bit cliche because it's true. Uh, I want to make a difference in people's lives and I want to be significant, which is what all humans want. We all want to be significant and important. I want to help make someone's life and business better for them so they can make a difference. Mm-hmm. I want to, and to do that, I want to serve a small number of private clients really well and get to know them well. Same with coaching clients. I can serve more coaching clients, but not a huge number. Mm-hmm. And I don't want to serve a huge number. Um, I don't want to be working with any more than a maximum of five coaching clients at a time. Because um, any more than that, and it's like... Um, I would rather... And even those on my courses, I don't want to fill my courses full of 100 people. I would rather have 20 people on a really in-depth course. Yeah, recognizable people that you can build a relationship with yeah. rather than a hundred people who you don't know who they are and work you know have them work with me in a kind of like this is a thing that we're going to do over six weeks and by the end of six weeks you will have you know your your book outline done your introduction done your conclusion written mm-hmm. or I would rather do like a really in-depth 12-week course that's like right we're going to write your damn book in 12 weeks you know and by the time you finish that course if you do all of the things that you're supposed to do you will have the first draft of your book by the end of that. It's not like I don't want to be selling courses to people, to hundreds and hundreds of people at a time and have only a tiny percentage of them actually do the thing, hmm. which is what happens with most. Um, so yeah, I would rather charge much more and have far fewer customers, but give them a much better service than a lot of my competitors can. Mm-hmm. So that's what I want. I want to find my weirdos basically. And I don't mind if it takes me longer to get to where I want to be. Because I think that shortcuts can be... Yeah, and it's it's like if if you're doing the things that you want to be doing, it's then not, it's, it's it's not work. It's not hard. It's yeah. not horrible. It's you're not you're not grinding away, and you know, yeah. it's nice. Much much more pleasant way to spend your time. And I feel also like saying I'm not knocking anybody who wants to grow something big and that they can sell and all the rest of it. But I don't think I think there's a lot of voices out. There's a lot of help out there for people like that mm-hmm. um, because the whole world is geared towards bigger, better, more. And that's that's fine if that's you. That's fine. But I very rarely hear anybody talk about people who want to stay small and do um, do work that matters to them on a smaller scale, mm. you know, and create something that might grow into something bigger one day. But for now is you know it's got a smaller sphere of influence yeah. well there's, there's 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 practical things you have to cover aren't there i mean there's there's an amount of money you need to clear in profit yeah so there, there are some there are some minimum sizes that you have to hit yeah and you know on that note i want enough money to not have to worry about money mm. i want enough money to be able to do what we want to our dingle mm-hmm. and i want enough money to travel some more and have adventures i want more time sure. time is the most important thing but that's not I want to make 10 million pounds in five years. For the sake of it, no. It's like, it's what can, we say this a lot. It's like, what can you do? What will the money enable you to do is mm. really important. And I have other ideas as well. I want to be able to set up um, reading and writing programs for people and improve literacy across the board. I've got big ideas for what I would like to do. And to do that, I'm going to need money because I need money to give me the time to do it. And also probably for some infrastructure shit as well. Sure. Um, what else do I want? I want more time to spend doing work that matters to me, to spend having adventures with Joe because we have adventures and to train at the aerial studio because i want to do more of that and to play the guitar get better at that because i'm not very good and learn languages yeah yeah i'm enjoying and to study i really miss studying physics uh studying physics at the open university yeah, yeah. i miss i did that for a while and then i just didn't have time which is sad i want to do that do you know what i wish would come back lecture series do you know, you know in victorian times people used to go to lectures yes like public lectures so is that a thing anymore? They st- there's there's series of them. There's like Christmas lectures, aren't there, and things. But they're but not... they're on the telly. I'd like to actually go to them. I think you might be hard hard pushed in the uh, in the Welsh borders. Oh, I don't mind travelling, hmm? but I don't do do lecture do like live lectures still exist? People science nerds. I'm not talking about the skeptics in the pub kind of thing because there there are lots of those all over the place. I'm talking about you know actual physicists being like, right, I'm going to do a lecture on quarks, hmm. and you can just go and listen to it. And then ask questions. I would imagine so. 
Oh, because I would like, I, I, I think I belong in Victorian times where you used to go to like fancy salons. Well, Join like, the Royal Society. I could do, couldn't I? No. I'm totally going to do that. <laughs> Write that down. Write that down. <laughs> well, no, I have to write it down because otherwise it won't happen. <laughs> Hang on. I'm going to write it down on my to-do list. Join. Join Royal Society. I can't believe I'm not a member of the Royal Society already. <clears throat> anyway, back on the podcast. Um, basically, I want to grow my life. Yeah. Not just the business. Yeah. And I want to grow a business that I enjoy so much that it's part of my life. And most of the time, I do enjoy my business that much but i have lots of work that i need to do to get it stable and i'm still kind of pivoting sure. at the moment so so yeah think about think about what you really want out of your business and your life okay and what you don't want and what you're willing to endure to make it happen that's really important what are you willing to endure yeah what are you willing to give up are you willing to give up an hour a night of telly to write your book oh yes are you willing to give up one of your daily cups of coffee from Starbucks to save enough money to, you know, invest in a course or something? What are you willing to do? What are you willing to endure to make to make it happen? Yep. So what's the takeaway? Uh, well, decide what you really want out of your life and your business. Yeah. It's, it's not that complicated, but it is quite difficult to do. I think a lot of people, you know, are on a treadmill and they, they go through school and they just they just take the next step. And very rarely do people stop and think, and is it, you know, kind of go, is this actually the direction I want? So I think that's, that's yeah. you know, really worth doing. There's a really good and alarming quote, and I can't remember the exact quote, and nor can I remember who said it, but it goes something along the lines of, you'll probably recognise it, um, if, you don't make, if you don't make plans for your life, you'll find yourself living to someone else's plan, and guess what they've got in store for you? Not mm. much. You, nobody, nobody will plan your life for you, and unless you plan your own life and make your own decisions, you will find yourself dancing to somebody else's tune for your whole life. We've said this before. I mean, you, you don't have to have like the the shining sun on the horizon as your destination. You can be a person who says, well, you know, the next couple of years I'm going to go in this direction. Yeah. You don't You don't have to have like a, well, when I'm 80, I want to have, I want yeah. to be in this position. No. You, know, you, can, you can take, you can take steps throughout your life. You can change yeah. direction every few years. Yeah. So, I mean, I've kind of done that because my, I guess my identity has always been that I am a creative person. I'm a writer. I dabble with arty stuff. I'm, you know, I play musical instruments. I learn language. I'm a creative person. I always have been. Mm -hmm. And I'm a scientist. But that is creative, I think. And so everything that I have done has been in that. I've done lots of different things and gone in lots of different directions, but they've all been in that sphere of, you know, creativity. Sure. And so the goals that I have all tend to be, you know, that kind of thing. It's like, I want to, I want, I want to help more people write books. I want books to be a bigger thing. I want books to be, you know, on the pedestal they should be on. <laughs> and that's kind of, I guess, my life's purpose, but there's lots of goals that I'll have along the way to get me there. Yeah. Yeah. Cool. So happy new year, everybody. Happy new year. Have a think about what you want your life to look like and what you're going to do for the rest of this year to make it happen. Because if you're just hoping that 2020 will be a good year for you, you're probably going to be disappointed. It's probably going to be much the same as recent years. I see a lot of people, and it makes me sad. I see a lot of people kind of post, oh, I hope I hope next year is better. And it's the same thing they posted on social media the year before and the year before that. Mm. And what I would like to see is people posting, this is what I am going to do yeah. to make sure I have a better year next year. And for people who have had a crap year that last year, I really do hope that next that this next year is better for you. And but, I want you to know that you've got the power to make it better. Yeah, And it, you're the only one who has got that power. For sure. Uh, it's kind of your prime responsibility is to look after yourself and your people and, and yeah. take steps. It's your prime superpower as well. Because as soon as you acknowledge that actually it's my, as soon as I acknowledge it's my responsibility to make my life better, that's a really empowering thing because it's like, wow, nobody else has the power to make my life shit, actually. Yeah. I, I am totally in control of this. And sometimes shit happens that you can't control, but that, you know, that it, you, it's up to you to deal with it and make it better. Deal, step around, move forwards. Bounce off, whatever. Yeah. And sometimes it's really shit. And, you know, you might lose someone you love or you might, some just something awful might happen. You might get sick. And again, it's like, I'm not, I'm not dismissing those things at all because I've had those things happen to me. But still, how you, how you deal with it really, really does determine how much power it has over the rest of your life. Hmm. You know, I don't want to sound like I'm dismissing people's woes because I'm not at all. But. No. But I, you, you, you do get to choose which way you are facing when you take your steps. 
Yes. Yes. Yeah. You can you can face the same way as everyone else. You can pick a destination you like the look of and head that way. Yeah. So yeah, decide what you what you want out of your business and your life and how you're going to grow your life. Because mm. growing your life, I think, is far more important. Right. Right. Next week, we are going to be reviewing the book Atomic Habits by James Clear, which I talk about a lot which because awesome. it's basically one of the best books I've read in a long time. Cool. And in on January the 30th, I'm launching my book officially. Nice. There's going to be some cool swag. Um, if you've already bought my book, um, I would get in touch with me when I launch it because some of the swag I will give you access to because I don't want you to miss out just because, you know, you got in there first. <laughs> Because you're basically awesome. So um, yeah, I will be making some of the swag available to you too. Running a writing retreat in Fuerteventura in late February. Nice. Date to be decided, but that is going to be, there's going to be a page up to book that in the next uh, couple of weeks. And if you want to come along and write the shitty first draft of your book or polish the shitty first draft of your book, that would be the perfect place to do so. Cool. Somewhere warm and sunny. If you've listened to every episode, email me with your postal address and I will send you a silly gift. If you like the podcast, go to iTunes, subscribe. It helps us climb the rankings. It helps people find us. Uh, go to Stitcher, whatever it is you use, uh, subscribe. Leave us a review. Leave us a review. Five stars. Um, if you don't want to leave us a review with five stars, there are other podcasts available. Um, <laughs> <laughs> um, share it with people as well. Um, moxiebooks.co.uk forward slash podcast. Um, share it on social media. Share it with your friends. Um, share it with people you don't like if you think it'll annoy them. Nice. And we will be back same time next week with another episode of the 1000 Authors Show. Nice. Bye. Bye. Thanks for listening. You can find links and show notes on the website at moxiebooks.co.uk forward slash podcast, where you can also sign up for the best daily emails in the multiverse and find loads of free resources to help you write your book. We'll be back the same time next week with more tales from the book writing trenches and the latest on what the tiny sheeps have been up to.